Hello and welcome. So, Unreal Engine 5.4 preview is out and naturally Epic Games developers shake the world again by enabling the real-time nanite tessellation and displacement that is enabled by that technology. And as you can see, we can now tessellate and displace any arbitrary geometry and any asset that we want. And as a bonus, it doesn't only displace the geometry that we see, it gets the benefit of self-shadowing, as you can see, these kind of like uh, indentations in our cube is being self-shadowed. And on top of that, even the shadows themselves, as you can see, they respect the geometry that's being displaced and tessellated. And it's pretty amazing. Of course, we can use it on any arbitrary geometry that we want. As you can see, um, I just exported 5.4 release and you see that it gets this virtually infinite geometric detail using the nanite and as we can see if we go to nanite visualization and we can see the overview you will see in the top left corner that indeed these are the triangles that are being generated on the fly however the geometry itself is relatively simple now if i get to the tessellation and disable it you will see immediate results that we do have this kind of um, the shadowing and lightning that is driven by normals well as you might expect so it looks kind of like okay it's not terrible but if we enable the tessellation you will see the immediate difference and result and how much of a dramatic effect it makes so let's actually see how we enable it in the new project and i will create a new project so that we can go through the motions and see how it's done okay so we go to the launcher launch the 540 preview the Unreal Editor loads. And we go to games, let's say third person, and let's say YouTube Distillation Tutorial 5.4, and click Create and see what we get. So after it loads, uh, for whatever reason, the previews are usually get my layout really wonky, but it's cool. I can load the layout, which is called Hexa A Game Development because um, Ubisoft introduced the quadruple A game development. I'm introducing the Hexa game develop because AAA, AAA game dev is just better. Anyway, so I go to the project settings, go to the frame rate, uh, enable fixed frame rate, make it 60 so it doesn't lag on YouTube when you watch it on 30 FPS recording. So this is highly optional. Now the next part, what we can do is we go to the plugins, start typing nanites, and we see the denied displaced mesh 0. Uh, 0. 0.1. So that's cool. And we restart the editor to enable that plugin. Now, what we'll now, what we're gonna do actually uh, is close the editor again because we need to edit the ini file. So what we're gonna do is go to our config, go to, where is it? Go to the YouTube test tutorial, go to config, Go to default engine ini. Here it is. Now we go to the render settings. Here they are. And we add the r.nanite.allow tessellation equals one and r.nanite.tessellation equals one. If you do not add these things, um, I tested it, it doesn't really work for whatever reason. Also, we will have to rewrite this command. In the editor as well but you'll see what i mean in a second so let's get back to our youtube test tutorial 5.4 and let me load my layouts okay cool so press ctrl b we get to the sm chamfer cube and let's actually say that we can create the desolation material here right click material amazing stuff okay so we double click here Okay, pay attention. This is going to be a little bit more confusing if you're not uh, particularly are good at materials, but worry not, I will record a fully featured tutorial later on about how to use material in Unreal Engine when 5.4 drops. But for now, just follow what you see. If you're confused, if it's too fast, it's fine. No need to sweat anything. Again, let's go to our plugins. Let's see if we Nena, if we if the Nena displaced enabled. It is enabled. Okay, so now we go to r.nanite.tessellation. If I press enter and see the output log, you'll see that for whatever reason, it's actually zero 
However, we wrote that it should be one, but you know, like I said, it's a little bit wonky, might be fixed later on. So what we're gonna do in this material is create a world aligned texture using the material attributes. So first things first, let's say attributes, use material attributes, and you'll see that everything collapses and looks kind of a little bit lonely here. So what we're gonna do is start typing attributes, make material attributes, connect this to here, and now we can start building our material, right? So here is some roughness and let's say something like this. So we, we just can create the material instance, drag and drop it on our box here. And we will see that, yep, our material instance works. Everything looks fine. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go Quixel Bridge, right? So here it is. And I already have downloaded this layered rock cliff material. And I downloaded it in high quality. I press add. Here it is. Cool. Now we can start drag and dropping our textures in our material editor. Now, before we begin, I want to say that we will be working with world aligned texture. So it's a little bit different from UV texturing. If you're accustomed to working with assets that have UVs, and you apply materials to UVs, it will be a little bit different working with normals and all that kind of stuff. Again, when the 5.4 actually releases, I will record a very detailed tutorial on that topic. So for now, again, just follow along. Right, so what we need to do is we are going to world align texture, right? And so if we just drag and drop texture here, you will see that it doesn't work. So what we wanna do is we need the texture object 2D. So Let's start texture object. Here it is. Here's the texture object. Here's the texture object parameter. So I will do the parameter because we will then use that in the material instance. So it just saves us like a couple of clicks. So what we're going to do is base color tray planner, connect it to texture object 2D, get the XYZ texture in the base color, press save. You'll immediately see that, well, if I disable this, you'll see that we do have the typical setup for world aligned textures. So in fact, if your geometry doesn't have UVs, it will work just fine. Uh, you will see that the textures are a little bit of a swimming through our geometry, but again, that's fine. This is almost what we want. So um, this covers the color. Next up, we will import the normals. And again, we need the world aligned normals. This function is different from the texture because texture is just, it doesn't get the direction of the normal. So we should use this if we want to use the triplanar normals. Again, texture object parameter, here it is. Um, here, I will just replace it with our normals. Break it here, XYZ texture and it goes to our normal. Now, if I press save right now, you will see that our normals will look kind of fine, but if we want to use the displacement and all that kind of stuff, I suggest we create a Boolean, again, static bool parameter, call it world space, connect it to our world space, and by default, we will enable this. And immediately you will see that our geometry will now look kind of weird. But again, to fix that, we go to normals here. Again, if you don't see this, just click here or select this node, right? Or click here on any other space and start typing normals. You'll see that the tangent space normal is enabled, but we're using world space. So enable it here, but disable it on the left side, press save. And finally, we get the result that we want. So what's next? Let's increase the roughness. By the way, I am using roughness like this because I do not have the separated texture here because as you can see this RGB and it says layered rock cliff and here it says 4K O R D. So it means occlusion roughness displacement. Now we'll be using occlusion for our displacement for because it's not a separated texture. It's a combined one, but for this demonstration it doesn't really matter. So what we're gonna do, I press, I click here, press Control D here, rename it, 
into this placement, drag and drop it here, and we'll be using the red channel to drive our displacement. And of course, we need world align text, world align texture, connected here, and now X, Y, Z texture to displacement. However, if I just move it here, we will not be able to control the amount of displacement in the material parameters. So what we're gonna do is we will multiply it by our arbitrary multiplier, and let's say displacement multiplier, the fault value will be, let's say, 0 0.1, slider minimum, negative 0.5, slider maximum, 1.5. And we will actually add a parameter that will, I will call displacement bias. And again, slider minimum 0 .0 0 0.5, slider maximum, let's say, 1.5. Default value will be 0 0.1. So you will see in a second why we are doing this like that. If I go back to our material instance, you will see that we now can tweak the displacement bias multiplier. Okay, let's let's call it roughness. Multiplier and bias, and it will be pretty dramatic, it will have a pretty dramatic effect on our geometry. We've done all this, and uh, you might be thinking, well, where, where is the effect, right? So, the effect is here. <laughs> we need to actually R nanite tessellation equals 1, and nothing happens. You'll be like, okay, where is the effect? Okay, so we uh, press, uh, select our geometry, press Control b then right-click on this chamfer cube, nanites, enable. Nothing happens again, because we actually forgot to get to the nanite here and of course enable tessellation and press save. All right, so now that we enable the tessellation here, right? Nothing again happens. Um, probably I made a mistake of writing it like that. If we press it here equals one, nothing happens. But if we say uh, nanite tessellation spacebar equals spacebar one, it will now work. I know it's weird, but, you know, whatever it takes, right? So, finally, we have our geometry uh, working perfectly, and you'll see that our box is finally getting displaced. Now, the box is fine. Let's actually in import some FBX that I have pre-made. Let's go document, work in progress, tessellation, geometry. Now. Important parts here is disable remove degenerates, uh, or basically disable all of this, and import normals and tangents. The important part about arbitrary geometry that you import from elsewhere is the same as you are working with any displacement at render time in any other engine, for example, like Cycles or Karma or Mantra or Arnold or whatever. Um, it means that you have to have geometry that is Continuous. So basically, the best part to ensure continuity of geometry is to have a sub D modifier somewhere down the line. And of course, and we have to have smooth normals. Well, basically, that's what you want with sub D geometry. Anyway, we import normals and tangents. Everything seems fine. Again, don't forget to disable this stuff. And do not press build nanite here because for whatever reason, it doesn't work. So press import, ignore this stuff, it doesn't matter, and we finally have our arbitrary geometry which says 5.4 release. Okay, so I'll make it a little bit bigger, make it movable, focus on this, move it around a little bit. Now, so what we're gonna do is go and apply our amazing stuff instance. You will see that, again, nothing really happens. The reason is is because we need to have nanites enabled and when we enable the nanites it will rebuild and everything will look just fine just for our conscience we can enable the explicit tangents because maybe we want to shade it a little bit different you can read about explicit tangents in 5.3 release uh, so that if you're not exactly sure what's going on so anyway what we have now is our letters that we can tweak 
at our leisure. Again, this is displacement multiplier, is how much displacement is being applied. And this is the bias, so it's the offset. Um, in other words, as you can see, it, how fat the geometry becomes, uh, because if you increase the amount of displacement, you'll have to offset the points at which displacement is being calculated. Otherwise, you will uh, end up with some weird geometry that will not be displaced because it will be not affecting because you will just, so to speak, over displacing your geometry. So basically, it will have no visual effect. Um, everything will be just a little bit too fat. So this is why we have the displacement bias. You will actually see, by the way, when we decrease the bias here, um, the left part of our number five is shaded very, very differently. However, this is just the bug of the calculating of the virtual shadows and it's fixed super easy. All we got to do is hold down control, control L and just move around our sun. And as you can see, everything goes back to normal and looking pretty good. And again, if we go, well, basically you can already see the displacement here. This is a jagged edge on our dot and we can go back to our nanite visualization press the overview you will see that these are the triangles that we have again the geometry itself as you have seen is super absolutely basic however using the nanite we can create the real-time displacement and it will look super cool also we can go back into the and make it something like dramatic like this the question is how cool is that and uh, I personally think it's really cool. It's super useful. I think this will revolutionize a lot of geometric and asset creation because we don't need to have super heavy geometry now. We can do it random time using nanites. It works. It's amazing. I love it. If you want to learn more about doing really cool stuff inside of Unreal Engine, don't forget to subscribe. I'll be recording many more videos going forward. And when 5.4 drops, uh, we will be really heavy into, well, basically asset creation, working with the game engine, doing some environments, all sorts of great things. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you are having a nice day and see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.